everyone. I am one of those people who writes random thoughts on the market receipts, on ATM printouts, doctor appointment cards, and this um, was one of the results. Thoughts in three parts. Here, New Year, Fecal Cliff, Seismic Drift, Forklift, and Asbury sat on a wire eating a well-balanced breakfast. <laughs> like space between dots, the place between thoughts of you stop me from what I ought to do. <laughs> Sometimes the voices of our past come to us in prose, not poetry. I woke up one night with Terry Lynn speaking to me, this childhood memory. Terry Lynn walks to town. Mom has let me walk up town alone since I was five and a half, even barefoot. If I run across Tolan's driveway, the rocks don't hurt my feet so bad. I jump over Francis's peony bushes if no one is watching. I love Francis. She lets me go up in the attic and try on the old costumes from when they owned an ice show. I look over at Don Nesbitt's house across the street. He and the neighborhood boys nearly killed Billy Eberly when they hung him from the clothesline while playing cowboy. <laughs> Jim was in on it too. I didn't tell mom. I am no tattletale like Tammy Dallas. Stanley Dallas lives across from Don. He's not on the porch today, good. He has TB, so I run by the real fast, holding my breath when he is. <laughs> the Gretton Chords come next on our side of the street. Art and Margaret, and kids Wayne, Ann, Donna, Max, and David. David is my best friend. I let him kiss me when I was six, <laughs> on the mouth. <laughs> Sometimes we have races on Anne's old crutches. A tire lay on her legs after a car accident, making her crippled since childhood. Donna would show me her paper doll collection and all of the Cinderella ball gowns she had made for them herself. Mean old Mr. Hedrick lives on the corner with his daughter, Barbara. He yells at David and me for picking cherries off his tree. If he is going to be so mean about it, why did he plant that tree so close to the sidewalk? <laughs> Barbara Hedrick works at the dime store and comes home every day to fix him lunch. I can either cross now at the Free Methodist Church or walk one more block and turn right at the butler's. Kathy Butler has a Madame Alexander Meg doll, which sits in the middle of her bed, its skirt all in a circle. I want that doll so bad. Her brother Bruce is what people call a handful. He does things like walk on the roof of the house. He nearly blinded himself once when he put caps in a vice to see what would happen. I was there. <laughs> I turn right and cross the street, Caddy Corner. John Cacus lives there with a cougar he brought with him from out west, Nevada, I think. He has tattoos and his wife bleaches her hair. My dad, Doc Creel, objects to his keeping a wild animal like that caged up, much less in town. <laughs> Weaving through the cars parked outside Daly's drugstore, I see no one is in the phone. Great, I'll just check for a dime in the coin <laughs> Around the corner on Main Street, I stop to look in the barber shop. Ronnie Smith gives three kinds of haircuts, a burr, a flat top, or a parted on the side. David has a burr, Jim has a flat top, and Keith Dimmick, the insurance man, has a parted on the side. <laughs> At last, the dime store. I go straight back to the aisle with the finger paint set I've been looking at. Oh, inside the box there are four plastic paint cups, red, yellow, blue, and green, some special paper, 
little wooden sticks to stir with. The best things about these paints is that you can use your hands. All for one dollar. That means one whole Saturday washing windows and cleaning my room. Grouchy old Barbara Hendrick tells me to put it back if I am not going to buy it. <laughs> she wouldn't say that if Mom were standing here. I put my finger paint set on the shelf, buy one double bubble and some Red Hots, and leave. I purposely overstretched the spring on the screen door so it will <laughs> slam real hard. <laughs> Back on Main Street, I lick my penny holding hand and eat some Red Hots out of the oven. I'm coming back on Saturday. <laughs> my mother's hair care has driven my life ever since I could remember. Keeping her standing appointment on Friday at 11.30 eclipsed fires, floods, <laughs> nuclear tax, <laughs> but without her hair color product, you might as well run for the fallout shelter. <laughs> Fanciful, frivolous fawn. <laughs> <laughs> hair porn. <laughs> hair porn. At the Walgreens on Beneva, beside the white minks and brown beaver, I find mom's fanciful, frivolous fawn. Sent to buy her favorite hair dye, the attempt at exotic seems vaguely erotic. Off we go. Next stop, beauty shop. She wears a yellow top. Yellow catches a fellow, you know. <laughs> My dad's two sisters married two brothers, two different sisters, two different brothers, um, producing 10 cousins who all lived on a big dairy farm in Ohio. The tribe of 10 plus two, when my brother and I uh, would visit, were controlled by what I have come to see as devil's food diplomacy. <laughs> Guilty party. Wise pie bakers slyly bribed us with sweets, plied us with treats, blatant deceit, in exchange for compliance, confusing defiance with good things to eat. <laughs> Don't hit your brother. Be nice to each other. Chew with your mouth closed. No private parts exposed. Don't be a whiny brat. Have some ice cream with that? <laughs> God guilt grief grasp me. Here, have a cookie. <laughs>